When I first met him, he said, I can remember these words, word for word. He said, welcome to Bad Boy, where all your dreams can come true. Mm. That's what he said. And then, he sold it. And I, and I thought that, hey, man, this was it. I even had it on film. I would sit back and watch. Welcome to Bad Boy, where all your dreams and everything you want to do can come true. I was like, wow. Went all the way from this to we ain't going nowhere, never went nowhere. And, I, you know, when I did The Bad Boy for Life, I happened to have one of the, the, the nicest verses on the album, and I just knew after Bad Boy for Life that my album was coming out next. I'm like, okay, that's going to be my time. And so they came out with Loon album. I'm like, I was signed to the label before Loon. I was signed to the label before G Depp. So I'd be like, what's going on with my, my, my album? Like, well, I'm, I'm ready to put this album together and go out there and be Mark Curry. And then, he, then they finally told me in his office, because I used to go to this lady named Francesca Spiro. Everybody remember that name. Google the name. Francesca Spiro. I go into her office, and she worked for Puff. She was the one to handle all the administration and how things were signed and filled out with ASCAP, BMI, whatever it may be, EMI. So she told me one day, she said, Mark, you ain't going to have an album. She said, you don't have a budget. <laughs> and I said, I don't have a budget. Hmm. Then I went to Puff. I said, Puff, what does she mean I don't have no budget? He said, Playboy, you need to holler at your manager. I'm like, holler at my manager? I thought what happened was I didn't have a budget. The budget, you know, back in those days when – when you're doing music, um, if you flew to a hotel in Louisiana for two weeks, it's coming out your budget. Like, you have artists like Black Rob, who had the opportunity to do um, his album, but once he finished his album, he did not know that he's going to be two million dollars in debt. So, in order for me to get royalties, royalty checks, first I'm gonna have to recoup two million dollars or whatever the, the, the amount of that recording budget was. So, I would always get royalty checks. Because I never had an album like that, so I still did the Godzilla. I get royalty check. I say, Rob, you didn't get your check? He said, what check? I said, you get a check. He said, I ain't get no check. Not, he got not one royalty check. G. Depp didn't know that um, about these checks. Like, what happens, it was EMI. EMI was the parent. Puff used to get the, the, their draw from EMI handles, whatever administration. Puff had Janice Cone. So EMI would send the money to Janice Cone Publishing. Then in return, Janice Cone would look at the, you know, see how much you got to recoup and then give you your check from there. Mm -hmm. So I was like, EMI is giving you, because he was handling the administration. I said, I don't want him handling my administration. I handle my own administration. And from now on, when my check comes, I want my check to come straight from y'all and a direct deposit into my bank. I do not want y'all giving my money to him, and then he gives me money because I don't like the way that goes. How did he receive that? The check? No. How did he receive that it? message? Oh, uh, one time he was like, because he. This is how I was on him. I was. I didn't play with him, and and one time, well, recently, <laughs> when he gave everybody the publishing back. And he called and he said, uh, Mark, I just want you to be one of the first people to know I'm giving your publishing back. I was like, wow. <laughs> I said, well, how about this? You're giving me the publishing back. I was like, yeah, thanks. I said, now, now that it's mine now, right? Yeah, now I want to sell it to you. I want to sell it to you. I said, don't even give it to me now. Let me, you just keep it and just give me some money. Now I want you to do what you, what you, what you feel you can. I already know you know what to do. I was like, yeah, go sell it. I was selling everybody's publishing. Like, that's one thing about me. I, I learned so much about the industry. I knew the, the Indians in California mm. with the Royalty Advance, Royalty Network, and I have a friendship with them. I could call and say, hey, man, um, this person right here, can you get him 10 years' worth of his money up front or four or five years' worth of his money? He wants to get a loan against his publishing stream because it wasn't a such thing as a bank that would actually – finance or even you know you'd be like well they have you have any assets you'd be like yeah i rule godzilla they'd be like we can't give you no money off of that we need something else you ain't got no property i said well i got godzilla i mean to me that's property that's something big nobody would finance anything like that so i found one company a, a long time ago they would finance and help you get money off of your music so when i knew that every time i, I met an artist that was going through things i would say listen I can help you get some money. But the money that I'm going to get you, you're going to have to be very careful and real wise on how you spend it because once you take this money, you're not going to make money for another four years. So they're going to give you four years of your money up front. 
But if you go buy a Bentley in the house and then uh, whatever else that you think that you want to get, go buy it. People would be like, oh, I'm going to go buy new studio equipment. I'd be like, why would you take money to go buy more studio equipment? Take your mm. money and invest it in something else that makes more money. You know, that's when we, st you know, start getting smart. You'd be like, you know, before I spend this money, let me go at least make some more money off of it right quick, you know, and then I'll go spend what I made off of it, but I'm going to still keep my solid bulk of money, mm. right? Yeah, so, Dan, your, your interactions with him after letting him know about your publishing. Well, he didn't like that. So he didn't like that. So how, did he, how did he begin to handle you from that point moving forward? I knew I was smart. He was like, yo, you know, I was like, man, I'm not waiting. I don't have to wait. I was like, I'm handling my own administration. And I can call EMI and let them know this is how I want to do my business moving forward. Mm. It was easy. I had my split sheet. I'm like, what do you mean? I have the split sheet right here that says that I um, own a certain percentage of this song right here. And since I own a certain percentage of this song right here, you have a deal with him to administer his publishing. I don't want him administering mine. My name, the name of my publishing was Me Again Music, right? Because I had a son, Me Again. I was giving my publishing to him. So that was it. That's mine. Wow. That's mine. I don't, um, he didn't like that. Yeah, clearly. Because mm -mm, you, yeah. you were there when, when Big got killed. When Big got killed, I was in Los Angeles. I was there. But when, when they went out, I, I remember I told you I'm in the studio. And this was before we had internet. And another thing, Puff is just exactly what the internet is today. He was a, 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 a person that had people that had emails and uh, they had uh, relationships with radio. They had a radio person. They had a B market radio person, uh, um, marketing promotion. So they, that's what it was. There was no, no internet. Mm. So when I would record a song in Los Angeles, I couldn't email it to him. I had to actually put it on a disc and burn it, either FedEx it, or if you're going to be in Los Angeles, I'm going to come and bring the disc to you. Mm -hmm. So when they came down to, um, for that award, I was in the studio trying to complete the projects that I was working on so I can give him the CD to go back to New York with. I hung out with him one night. One night I hang out with him. We went to a club. I think it was Bar One in Los Angeles. We went out. I, I, I met, I uh, hung out Carl Thomas. This is like when I really was meeting him. I met Carl Thomas. We took pictures. Um, um, and then Biggie was there. And then, uh, so I went back home to the studio. And then the next morning, right? Next morning. Um, crazy. Um, the person who I was working at the time at the studio's name is D1. And the police went and raided his house and took the pictures that he took with Biggie the night before Biggie had got killed, right? I was there, and but I didn't go out that night. And um, it was just like a, a, a tragic moment, but yeah. yeah. 